Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Wakis porter You must be prepared to ignite. Coming up on this episode of The Entrepreneurial You. When people say that trading or entrepreneurship is risky, I would actually say that you know working in a job or working in a company is actually more risky because while I'm creating a business, while I'm building my following, while I'm building my client base, I'm building wealth for life. Hey, 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 how are you doing, my awesome, amazing person of Excellence. I am Henneka Watkiss Porto, host of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by R. Cook Customs Broker Limited, Bookophilia, Jamaica Stock Exchange, and Patwa Apparel. And now, let's go to today's episode. Peak performers. Today's guest started trading during his early college years without much luck. After a year or so, he discovered a pattern that allowed him to go from zero to a profitable trader. To date, he has generated a lot of profits for him and his investors in trading wins and continues to remain a stock and foreign exchange trader. He's also an avid real estate investor with a large portfolio and has funded two other tech-based companies. He now spends most of his day managing funds and working with students of Live Traders, which he co-founded in 2014. I'm so happy to have on the Entrepreneurial You, Anmol Singh. Welcome, Anmol, to the Entrepreneurial You. Thanks for having me. I have a fun question for you before we get started. Would you rather always be cold or always be hot? 100% I'd always be cold <laughs> rather than hot. Jamaica would do you not much good right now, huh? But I would love to be in Jamaica. <laughs> oh, well, sacrifice the cold and, and come, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, before we get started, give us your social media handles so that our peak performers can link you right up. Sure, my uh, handle on social media is at Delta90. It's the same handle on Instagram, same handle on Twitter, and anybody else on social media. It's at Delta90, and it's all spelled out, D-E-L-T-A-N-I-N-E-T-Y. Thank you so much. All right, so we have listening our show, The Entrepreneurial You. Persons who are interested in becoming entrepreneurs, you know, we're making that contemplation. And we also have persons who are, you know, who have already been on the journey and are pretty seasoned. Now, we want you to break down for us as a stockbroker. We want to know what really are stocks. Well, stocks are basically, you know, you you investing in a company or trading a company stock. A stock is mainly just a reflection of how the company is doing. And, uh, um, if you buy a stock in a company, you're buying a share in that company. And we as stock traders, what we're basically doing is we're uh, playing the price action. We're betting on the stock price to go up or go down, and we try and make money uh, that way. Okay, so pretty much all you do is you are waging on the on, on the share in each company that um, persons decide to invest in. That's correct. And these stocks that you offer to clients... What are the types of stock, you know, the different types of stock that that you involved in, that you engage with? All right. So we are mainly doing stock trading rather than a stock broker. Uh, So what we do is um, to our clients, we are basically trading live every day. So me and my partner, we have like a webinar type of platform and uh, where we are trading our own money and our own accounts live in real time. And then our clients and our subscribers pay a uh, subscription to watch us actually trade the market so they can learn how to trade the market and some people uh, try and replicate us or try and follow what we're trading um, so that's what we're really uh, providing to the clients and the type of stocks we're trading are all sorts of stocks you know could be Facebook could be Twitter could be Baba um, you know whatever company is moving in that particular day we're speculating on the price of that so for entrepreneurs who are thinking to invest why should they choose stocks as an option well, I think the number one reason to choose stocks as the option is the. if you look at the history, um, stocks have historically given the best returns. Because if, if you're in the U.S. or if you're anywhere in the world and if you put your money in the bank, 
you know, you're getting 1% return or 0.5% return. And, you know, with that return, you're not going to get rich. You're not going to build wealth with that amount of a return. So you need higher percentage return. And historically, the stock market has been the only avenue apart from real estate that has provided those returns. And uh, history has shown if long term you are investing in the stock market uh, and if you have, uh, you know, the patience to hold on, historically, you're going to get the best returns and you're going to compound your money uh, many times over if you're invested in the stock market. And apart from the stock market, there's real estate that offers similar returns. But there's no other, um, you know, there's no other avenue or there's no other investment that it can offer the type of returns than investing in the stock market can. On average, what is the rate of return vis-a-vis money in the bank? Um, you know, it depends. There's two types of invest, uh, trading and investing. So we call it, one is called swing trading. Swing trading is where we're actively trading the stock. We're getting in, we're getting out, trying to uh, capitalize on the short-term fluctuations. So that trade, we might get in and out a few times. So in that case, the return can be much, much higher. Um, you know, it could be 20%, could be 30%, could be 100%. I mean, it really depends on the trader. But, and then there's the other style, which is long-term investing, where you're buying a stock and you're just holding on to it. You're not getting in and out every time. So historically, the average rate of return people can get by being invested in the stock market is anywhere from 8 to uh, 12%. The higher the rate of return so too is the higher the, the risk that is involved. So talk to us about some of the, the risk that are associated with stocks. You have to be mentally strong as a person to trade in the stock market or even you know in entrepreneurship and business in general. You need to have a strong mindset of success. If you don't have that mindset, you know that's the biggest risk because when we're getting into a trade or when we're getting into a stock, you know we already pre-plan what's going to happen. If the stock goes here, we'll get out and take our profit. The stock goes down there, we'll get out and take our little loss. And, you know, we're pretty pre-planned trading that here's where we're going to get out if we're wrong. Here's where we're going to get out where we're right. Whereas if you don't have a strong mindset, you know, people tend to hold on to the trades that are not working, right? You might be in a stock and it's going against you. You're losing money on it. And uh, most people will just keep on holding in the hopes that it comes back up. And that's the biggest risk. You cannot have hope. Hope is not a strategy. You cannot have hope in trading. You know, when you're trading, you need to know exactly where you're going to get in, exactly where you're going to get out. And if you're holding on to a trade that is going against you, then, you know, that is not a strategy. So what I like to tell people is, you know, don't buy and hope. <laughs> you have to have a strategy behind the trade. What piece of advice do you have for the risk averse? You know, there are many risk averse am- amongst us, although entrepreneurs by nature are risk takers, but then there are different levels of risk, yeah? So what would you say to the risk averse? Well, I mean, to the risk averse, I would say you need to develop a mindset for risk. Because if you want to be, if you want to be successful in trading or in business in general, you need to be willing to take risk, right? Because um, even if it's smaller amount of risk, a risk is evident, like risk is going to happen and you have to be confident enough to take the risk. If you're risk averse, and let's say if you're not taking risk, that to me shows a lack of confidence in your own trading plan or in your own business plan or in your own self. So I think risk is an inherent part of being successful as an entrepreneur. I've taken many risks in my businesses and many risks in my life, and some pay off and some don't. And that's just how life works, right? We take, we start five business companies, you know, uh, four maybe don't work, or let's say three don't work, one is an okay money maker, and one is a good success. And so by that very nature, some of the ventures are going to fail. And you just have to be confident in yourself and in your plan to continue to take that risk. I think risk is must, must, it's a, it's a must, like it's an important part of being successful. And speaking of risk, Anmol, what has been one of the biggest risks you've ever taken and it has proven successful? I think the biggest risk was me getting into trading. <laughs> you know, when I finished, uh, I finished my graduate degree. I got a business honors degree from you know a university in London, and uh, you know got a great degree. And instead of going for a corporate career, instead of going for a job, I started trading. So that was a big risk uh, I took in my life. Well, most of my friends 
after college were getting jobs, they were starting corporate career. I was in my room trying to learn how to trade. So that was a big risk that I took. But, you know, I took the risk and it paid off. It's good when we can take a risk and we can see the rewards. You know, we look back and we, we, we said to our, we can say to ourselves, what if we hadn't done this particular thing? You know, we would have been able to to reap the rewards of success. You know what I mean? I mean, and, and as you mentioned, entrepreneurship is a very risky thing. You know, it's not for the faint of heart. And so too, as we've been we've been saying, is trading in stock is also a risky thing. But then we have to balance that, balance that with what the information, because I think most of the time, what what caused this level of you know risk aversion is the fact that persons are not informed. You know, they they don't have the information that is necessary to make a particular decision. Exactly, and you know when people say that trading or entrepreneurship is risky, I would actually say that, you know, working in a job or working in a company is actually more risky because while I'm creating a business, while I'm building my following, while I'm building my client base, I'm building wealth for life. But when you're in a job, you know, what if there's an economic downturn and you get laid off or you get fired? Now you have nothing. Right. So having a job is actually way more riskier than starting a business. Indeed, indeed. And it so reminds me of when I was thinking about quitting my own job to start, you know, my first business, which is called Patwa Apparel, you know, and, and I started to feel all the fear. And I'm saying, boy, I have all this paid vacation. I have sick leave. I have subsidized lunch. Why would I go into the, you know, how do I go into the world of the unknown that I don't have, I don't have the security, but that was actually an illusion, you know, a, an illusion of security being on a nine to five, because at any day you can get a letter that says, you know, thank you so much for your service, but unfortunately, you know, <laughs> so that, as you rightfully say, is really risky. I'm going to take a break right here uh, and more to thank my sponsor and then we're going to come back and talk about how stocks trade. I want you to take us a little into the intricacies of that so we can get a better understanding of how stocks trade. Success is something that we all work towards as an end goal, but we need to be in the right environment to make it happen. Bookophilia is dedicated to providing a space for book, coffee and tea lovers, creatives, educators, students, and professions who want ideas, innovation, and inspiration. They have a variety of high-quality books, a cafe, events such as book launches, signings and art exhibitions, and professional services uniquely tailored to your needs, culture, and tastes. Their environment provides for the full literary arts experience, allowing for multifaceted creative expressions. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Bookophilia. Welcome back. And we're talking with Anmol Singh of Live Traders. We're talking this thing of stocks. And now Anmol is going to take us through the intricacies of how stocks trade. Stock trading is like a whole profession in itself. So the way we are trading stocks is based on technical charts, strategies, patterns, and statistics. So what we do is we look at charts of stocks and we look at what the stock has done previously and based on its prior history we make educated decision on what it might do in the future so technical charts are just patterns setups that we see on graphs to determine what the stock can do where do you gather your data from uh, well we gather the data from the uh, charts of the stock so every trading platform comes preloaded with uh, the ability to look at the graphs and the charts of the stocks and then based on those charts, we find some of the patterns and strategies that we use at live traders uh, in order to trade those. Seconds count in trading based on, you know, what I've read and so on. Mere seconds, you can you can see a stock valued at X and by the time uh, 30 seconds would have passed, it, it's valued at a totally different figure. Uh, what? How does time affect trading? Uh, well, time is very important in trading, especially for day trading. If you're doing long-term trading, then time is not that important. But when you're doing short-term trading, where you're getting in and out of stocks, you know, every few minutes or every few hours, then time is of the essence. You know, every little second, every little minute can cost you money. Because if the stock is going at a price and you want to buy it at that price, let's say you're five minutes late and the stock has already gone up, 
right? And it's already gone up to where you thought it would go up. So now you totally missed the trade. So as a day trader, you really need to be focused and you know just time is of the essence as a day trader. But in the long term trading, you can get away with it because you know you're looking for bigger moves. You're looking for the stock to go up 10 percent. So if it goes up half percent, you know it's not a big deal. You haven't really missed it. But for day trading, short term trading, we're looking to capture one percent, half percent here and there. So every little second matters. What stock qualify for the day trading versus the long term trading? So for long term trading, we're looking at the trend of the stock what has has done over weeks and months. So we're looking at, you know, a stock um, and what the trend is, is it an uptrend, is it in a downtrend? And if you're looking to buy something for the long term, we want the stock to be in an uptrend, which is it's continuously going up and we're expecting it to continue to go up. So that's what we do for long term. Short term, we're looking at totally different things. Short term, we're looking at different time frames. So we might be, instead of looking at a daily or weekly time frame chart, we might look at a five minute time frame chart and we're making decision on what it might do in the next five, 10 or 15 minutes rather than in the long term chart where we're making decision based on what it might do in a few weeks or a few months from now. Um, and the difference is, you know, not that similar. I mean, it's pretty similar. The long term trading and short term trading It's just that long term trading, you're going to be looking at a few months of data, whereas in short term trading, you might just be looking at uh, you know a day or two of data. And how do you determine whether to go long term or the day trading? Well, I personally do both. And I also recommend all my students to do both because what we think about it is day trading. We think of it as income producing. So day trading, we're trading for income. We're trading to generate some cash to pay the bills to you know live our life. So day trading is considered income producing where we're generating income and long term trading. We consider as wealth building where we have an account. And we're not looking to take money out of the account. We're not looking to spend the money. We're just looking to grow that account. So I recommend both types of trading, day trade for income to live on, and then long-term trading to grow an account to do build, belt, build, uh, build wealth. And let's move on now to the issue of valuing stocks. How are stocks valued? What is the thought process that goes into valuing a stock? You know, stocks valuations are dependent on many factors, you know, fundamental factors, technical factor but in the end it all comes down to two emotions fear and greed that's what really determines the price of the stock because uh, you know stocks don't go up or down you know magically if they go up based on people buying and selling so you know if there are more buyers than sellers you know if they're more active buyers than sellers the stock's going to go up if they're more active sellers than buyers the stock's going to go down so it all comes down to two emotions fear and greed when there's more fear in the market stocks start to fall and that's what happened in the crash of 2008 where everybody was really fearful and the stock just started going down and then what happened in the dot-com bubble of 2000 was stocks just keep on going up and that was because of the greed when greed kicks in the stocks go up and their fear kicks in the stocks go down now as far how is they valued uh you know fundamentally there are many reasons you know how the company is doing you know how the company is growing how can the company continue to grow? How is the CEO? How is the management of the company? Or does the company have good pro, uh, you know, growth prospects in the future? Uh, you know, that really determines the pricing of the stock. But we, as technical traders, we honestly don't care about that. Because <laughs> uh, technical, we're just based trading based on the patterns, the strategies, the setup. It's really statistics based. So we actually, a lot of times, don't even know the names of the companies that we're trading. We're just trading based on what we see on the chart a lot of times i i'll watch the the news the financial news and you hear that abc stock the they they were winners today and cde or def they were the losers today what does that mean well basically what they mean is that they lost uh, or they went down today so when they say the stock is a loser today that means it went down today might have gone down one percent two percent and when they say winners of the day that means the stock you know closed higher than what it was the previous day so the previous day the stock was sixty dollars and today it's at 61 you know that means the stock was a winner today it went up and uh, if the stock closed at sixty dollars yesterday and today it's at 59 that means it's lost a dollar so it's a loser for the day and no i want you to take us now through some of the jargon that i hear you know we, we all hear from time to time the bulls and the bears and just you know what kind of sentiments would that would have led for that description whether bull or bear a bull is when you expect the stock to go up you're known as you're bullish and when you expect the stock to go down that means you're a bearish 
So the best way to think about it is think about the horns of the bull, right? The bull has horns, which way they are pointing? They're pointing up, right? So when you expect a stock to go up, you're bullish on the stock. And you think about the horns of the bear. The bear's horns are always facing down, right? So when you expect the stock to go down, that means you're bearish on the stock. What final piece of you know, advice, as it were, you can leave with us as we contemplate investing in stocks? The best advice I would tell is to get yourself educated first. Don't just you know, jump in and start trading or start investing because you need to know what you're doing. So the first thing would be to you know, educate yourself, learn, you know, read some articles and get yourself really involved in the stock market and see how it really works and then judge for yourself if it's right for you or not. Because for some people, it's not right for you. You know, maybe if you don't have the capital or if you don't have the money that you can't afford to lose, then, you know, it might not be right for you because you need to have money what I like to call playing money. I mean, if you are making $10,000 a month, yeah, can you afford to take out 1000 a month and put it in your trading account? If so, I would recommend doing that. But if, let's say, you really need to live on that money, then that might not be an activity suitable to you. So the best way, really, is to give us a call. There, there's a number on our website, livetraders.com. Give us a call. Get a free 15-minute consultation where we can speak to you and you know find your goals and see if it's something that you might you should even get into in the first place. So do that. And then another best resource is, again, head on over to the website at uh, livetraders.com where you can download a free ebook that we wrote, which will walk you through the basics of what the stock market is, how it works. And uh, in addition, there's some great YouTube videos we have on our YouTube channel and great blog posts that we've written on the website. So that would be the first step before buying or investing in any program or course or even your own trading account. It's important to fill your mind up with the right information. Information is key and that makes all the difference. Anmol, it has been such a great pleasure talking with you, with you coming to share with our peak performance community. We wish you every success in your business. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And now a word from our amazing sponsors. We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. As an entrepreneur, you have a business to grow. You need to spend time working on your business instead of in your business. Don't waste your time dealing with imports and exports. Contact the experts. Our Cook Customs Broker Limited. Their services are reliable, efficient, and designed to fit your budget. With over two decades of experience, they are rated Tier 1 by Jamaica Customs. They offer customs brokerage services imports and exports, freight forwarding and haulage contracting. Contact them at one 977 224 or email them at rcookcustomsbroker at gmail.com. What do you know? We have come to the end of another great episode of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. I trust that you learned something and that something resonated with you so that you can share with others and speaking of sharing, I'd so love for you to leave a comment on the show notes page of each episode. Well, we're talking about this one in particular. Leave a comment at the end of the page so that when you go the topic, you click down. And at the end, there is an option there for you to comment. If you're accessing through iTunes, then by all means, I'd love for you to leave a rate and review that will keep us as a top rated podcast. It means a lot to me for you to help me out in this way. 
right? I know you are listening from all over the world. And I so appreciate it from Japan to Germany to India to Pakistan, everywhere in the Caribbean, in the United States, in Jamaica in particular. Big up my Jamaican peeps. Big up those, of course, in Ohio and all those other states that persons are listening in from, that you are listening in from. I so truly appreciate you. Now, if you want to reach out to me personally, you can actually send me an email, you know, send it to Henneka Watkins Porter at gmail.com. I am truly looking forward to connecting with you. If you want to send me a voicemail too, you can do that through my website. Just go to the middle at the right of the screen. There is an option for voicemail when you go to Henneka Watkins Porter.com. I do want to hear from you. Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. What good 